Hello everyone. This video is on an exhibit curated by the Barrowville Area Arts Association in January of 2017. It's a winter weather collection of 12 uh, of our favorite prints that were chosen for their beauty and for their importance in art history. And they're given in chronological order. You might be surprised that some of the prints that we have are lesser known prints of famous artists that are a little bit outside their usual style. This first one is called Hunters in the Snow by Peter Bruegel the Elder, which he did in 1565. Uh, winter scenes are rare in Western art until the Renaissance, and most artists agree that winter scenes are harder than other kinds of landscapes. So this is one of the few early winter scenes that has survived. And it kind of bridges the symbolic representations of winter in earlier art and the more detailed drawings of the Renaissance. This particular one, it looks like it's a nice day for the skaters and the hockey players, but not so much for the hunters. You can see their dogs look exhausted, and two out of three of them are coming back empty-handed. This is Winter Scene on a Frozen Canal by Hendrik Averkamp, which he did in 1620. Uh, the Dutch Golden Age roughly corresponded with one of the coldest periods of the last thousand years. And there was no Dutch painter, not even Vermeer or Rembrandt, who drew winter scenes as often or as sensitively or as passionately as Averkamp. He was deaf and mute since birth, as some of you may know, and he learned to skate as a child and really loved skating. And he became a specialist in winter scenes in the frozen low countries. In this uh, picture, the use of one-point perspective is really a stroke of genius. We can appreciate the fancy skaters and the masked partiers on sleighs, while other sleigh riders stretch out into the horizon. This is called Simply Winter by Francis Boucher in 1755. Uh, the painting was executed for Madame de Pompadour, who was Louis XV's official mistress, as opposed to his unofficial mistresses, I suppose. And its irregular shape suggests that the, it might have hung in a door in one of her many residences. It's typical of the Rococo style of the 18th century, and the flirty female's outfit is definitely not weather appropriate, but it's a painting that we liked anyway. Snowstorm. This next picture is Snowstorm, Hannibal and his army crossing the Alps by J.M.W. Turner, which was done in 1812. But where's Hannibal? He's nowhere to be seen in this picture. We can see some of the worn-out invaders. Uh, they're attacked by the defending army in the storm of the century. Uh, at the time, this painting was both an artistic and a political statement. This is The Sea of Ice by Caspar David Friedrich in 1824. Frederick was Germany's greatest romantic. Here he's recreating the shipwreck of the HMS Gripper, a British vessel on the expedition to the North Pole. An iceberg is totally dwarfing the ship. It looks like um, a gravestone to me is just as much as a roadblock to the ship. And the message that we take from this is exactly the same time Mother Nature is both sublimely beautiful and totally indifferent to human life. The Oxbow by Thomas Cole 1836. This is one of his more famous works. Thomas Cole was the dean of the Hudson River School of Landscape Painters. Uh, not a real dean, of course, because it wasn't a real school, but it was a group of New York City painters that liked to paint the Hudson and Delaware rivers. And this masterpiece looks at first glance like a typical bend in the Connecticut River, which it is, but some people say there's also a a statement in there about manifest destiny if you look very closely. Uh, toward the west everything is kind of cloudy and messed up, perhaps suggesting that uh, white settlers ruined the purity and beauty of the west as they came along. This is The Forest in Winter at Sunset by Theodore Rousseau. Uh, after he got lots of rejections from the Paris Salon, Rousseau became one of the leading figures in the Barbizon school. It was a collection of mid-19th century painters who drew the forest of Fontainebleau. This particular painting, which he didn't finish before he died, is less concerned with the exact appearance of the bare oaks of the forest than with our place in nature and the awe that it inspires. The Drum Bridge at Yuhi Hill at Meguro by Hiroshigi in 1857. This image depicts a rare stone bridge in the city we now call Tokyo. 
From the painter's perspective, the bridge seems dwarfed by the snow-filled sky. The passers-by get lost in the landscape under the bamboo hats. Under so much snow, we realize that the man-made cities are only temporary. This is George Henry Bowden's Pilgrims Going to Church, which he painted in 1867. These God-fearing Puritans endured the harsh New England winters to establish a foothold in North America, and Bowden borrowed this style from peasant procession paintings by the French artist Jules Bastien Lepage. We really like this one by Monet, Claude Monet, called The Magpie. Uh, it's different than a lot of his other paintings. He was uh, a master of winter scenes, uh, and the story or legend goes that when Manet saw some of his work, he abandoned all efforts to paint his own winter scenes. Magpie is Monet's uh, largest painting, and we love the single blackbird on a fence and the use of the blue in the shadows. This is Winter Landscape by Kandinsky, which was done in 1911. This depiction of a snow-blanketed country landscape is one of his last figurative paintings before he turned entirely to abstract painting. The yellow sky buzzes with green and white, the past of the small house glows pink, and the hillside is a rioting mob of colors, which we enjoyed very much. And finally, uh, you might not guess who this artist is unless you're really a connoisseur. It's actually Edward Munch, who was famous for that painting Scream, you know, the guy with his head in his hands twisting his face. Uh, this is relatively tranquil compared to that. It's relatively tranquil. It's a uh, cold winter landscape, which he did in 1915. But you could still see a little bit of Munch in there because it's tranquil compared to his other paintings, but it still elicits very strong emotions. So we hope you enjoyed this presentation of our 12 winter weather favorites and that you'll visit us again soon.